Whenever I'm invited to give a talk about the interactions within the brain-gut microbiome system, by far the most common question that comes from the audience is what I think about the benefits of probiotics. More specifically, which specific probiotic do I recommend? As you well know, there are literally hundreds of different brands advertised on the internet and promoted by savvy influencers. They're being promoted based on the number of so-called colony-forming units, which means the number of live microorganisms that are in each serving or dose, the number and types of strains, and on the presumed effectiveness evidence based largely on small studies performed in animal models or test tubes or in low quality clinical trials. My short answer to these questions is based on evidence from well-controlled clinical trials, my own research, and from the personal reports I've been getting from patients over decades in clinical practice. The question is difficult to answer when it comes from somebody in a large audience, but there's an answer that I give to patients in my clinic. If you've taken a particular probiotic for some time and you're sure it has been helpful for your symptoms of digestive discomfort or IBS, there's no need to change it. Just continue taking it. If you've tried different probiotics and have never been sure if it made any difference for your symptoms, your well-being, this may be a good time to consider some alternatives. The one that I always start with is modifying your diet by incorporating different types of naturally fermented foods into your diet. You can select such foods based on your taste preferences and take a simple symptom diary for a couple of weeks to get some objective info if this dietary change provided any benefit for you. This way, you may be able to identify your personalized regimen of therapeutic microorganisms that works for your symptom. Ironically, these naturally fermented foods cannot be called officially probiotics as they don't meet the official definition life microorganisms, which when administered in adequate amounts, confer a health benefit to the host. So let me walk through a few facts about the health benefits of consuming such beneficial life organisms. Does it make a difference if I consume my microbes in form of a capsule, in a drink or dairy product, or if I simply consume a variety of naturally fermented foods such as kefir, yogurt, kombucha, and sauerkraut? The answer is epidemiological studies in large number of patients have shown that the intake of fermented dairy products is associated with reduced risk of type 2 diabetes or improved glucose tolerance and a reduced risk for overall mortality. A recent well-controlled clinical trial by the Sonnenberg lab in Stanford has shown the benefits of naturally fermented foods if taken in a variety. Other specific health claims that companies make for different strains of microbes credible, or is there a core benefit of probiotics based on their species level? So do most probiotics have the same beneficial effect? It's not dependent on the individual strains. So the answer is based on a large number of studies, it appears that there is such a core health benefit in individuals consuming fermented foods with most evidence supporting beneficial roles of bifido and lactobacilli, regardless of the strains of these microorganisms. The claims about specific health benefits of individual strains are largely based on preclinical studies in mice or on isolated cells without clinical evidence that these observations obtained in isolation translate into clinical health benefits for you. Next question, are there claims for certain probiotics credible that they help to provide a healthy gut microbiome? The problem is that we don't have an agreed upon definition of a healthy gut microbiome. There's some evidence that ingestion of beneficial microbes increases the diversity and richness of the gut microbial ecosystem. And that's one definition that people have been using in terms of talking about the health of your microbial ecosystem. Next question, how good is the evidence that certain probiotic strains provide a clinical brain health benefit? In other words, have a so-called psychobiotic effect. Some microorganisms have been shown to reduce emotion-like behaviors in mouse models, but the majority of these effects have not been confirmed in well-controlled human studies. A shortcoming of the whole microbiome field 
that evidence can be provided in animal studies, but they're not translatable easily into humans. So in summary, even though there appears to be a general health benefit of certain microbial species, such as lactobacilli and bifidobacteria, the evidence for specific health effects in humans of specific microbial organisms and strains is very weak or absent. While probiotic benefits on nonspecific gut symptoms like bloating, gurgling, and indigestion have been demonstrated in high quality clinical studies, the evidence of effectiveness for the treatment of common GI disorders like IBS, inflammatory bowel disease is currently not available. The question about the benefits of probiotic intake after a course of antibiotics is unsettled. There's both positive and negative results on that question. So in summary, if you want to maintain a rich and diverse gut microbiome, a diet high in a variety of plant-based foods and naturally fermented foods is the best way to achieve this goal.